In this video, we're going to be talking about printing. And essentially, we're going to be talking about four different topics here. Two of them, the first two, is going to be MicroStation's built-in print capability, MicroStation Print, and then MicroStation Print Organizer. That's our batch printing tool. And secondly, we'll be talking about iPlot. iPlot has two components. There's iPlot, which is built into MicroStation, which is great for printing individual files. And then there's Interplot Organizer, which is the batch printing component of it. So to start off, we're going to be looking at MicroStation's print capability. When you go to print, you're going to need to place a fence. So I'm going to come up to my Place Fence tool, and you always want to go from the lower left to the upper right. Now, as I move my cursor down here, what you're going to notice, and some people have already noticed that you're not seeing the yellow X. You're not seeing AccuSnap. You could do a tentative, but AccuSnap for placing fences was turned off for this version. Here's how you turn it on. You come up to your snaps at the top, the yellow X, right click, you go to settings. On the general tab, about three quarters of the way down, you see enable for fence create. I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to close the dialog. I'm going to recycle my place fence tool. Now when I come down to the bottom left corner, you will see the yellow X. That's a quick way to turn it back on. So I'm going to place it from the lower left corner, do a data, go into the upper right corner, data. And you want to make sure that you are accurately snapping because there are three components to printing. There's the area, which is defined by the fence. There is the paper size, which you pick, and then there is the scale. The third thing, the scale, is a byproduct of the area and the paper size. Matter of fact, if you give me two of those three, I will tell you what the third one is because it's always a byproduct. So if your scale doesn't come out exact, like exactly one inch equals 50 or 100, then you know that the shape or area that you defined, uh, something was wrong with that. So now that I've got my fence placed, I'm going to go to my MicroStation print. So I'm going to come up to my Quick Access Toolbar. I'm going to click Print. The MicroStation print dialog appears. Now we have some menu items across the top here. We have some icons, which are our shortcuts. Now there are print styles that we can apply, and there's a shortcut to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a print style. And here I click to see my choices. And again, I'm doing an 11 by 17 PDF. So that's the one I'm going to choose. So I'm going to click OK, and that will set things up for me. Now below that is where the paper size is. And again, that was a byproduct. And just above that is the plot driver that it's going to be using. In this case, CT for Caltrans PDF, because we're creating a PDF. Half black and white, BW, black and white. The half refers to the fact that we're printing this on 11 by 17. Now, this is important because you, if you are going to print to an 11 by 17, you're going to want to make sure that you choose the correct plot driver because by choosing half, this tells MicroStation you're going to be taking a print that was intended to be printed on a D-sized piece of paper, and you're going to be printing it on a much smaller piece of paper. And that means that it's going to take some of the line weights and drop them down. And the line styles, the custom line styles, like a gas and a right of way and things like that, those will be sized accordingly. So it's important that you choose the correct one. Now, coming down, you can see my scale. Again, this is a 1 inch equals 50 foot drawing when printed on a ANSI D. We're not printing it on an ANSI D. We're printing it on a 11 by 17. So our scale is going to be different than if it was on a ANSI D size paper. So with all of this set, you can see the preview there. We also have a way of previewing this on a larger dialog. So if I click preview, you'll see it comes up and we can see a preview of what it's going to look like. So we can go ahead and close that out. Now at this point, we can go ahead and we can click print to file and our pen tables already chosen for us. That was part of the applying a style. So if I click print to file, it will come up and it'll ask me where do I want to print and it will default to my user on the D drive. So I could tell it pretty much anywhere I want it to go. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop it off here on my D drive for the sake of expediency. There it is. There's my PDF. And there's something unique about 
printing to a PDF here at Caltrans and MicroStation. So on the left-hand side, if you see the layers icon, if I click that, you're gonna see that the levels within MicroStation have been exported out to the PDF. So if I continue to expand, you're going to see all of my different levels. So I can turn these off like existing roadway. I'll turn that off by clicking the Adobe eyeball and I can do existing man-made. So you can see I can affect the way the PDF looks just like turning off levels within MicroStation. So we're gonna go ahead and close the Adobe Acrobat. This is MicroStation's print. This is printing one file at a time if you wanted to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and close that and we're gonna go ahead and get rid of our fence. Now there's something else that we wanna talk about here and this has to do with a what's called a plot shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this over to the side. I'm gonna to go to my copy element tool. So I'm gonna hit space bar, I'm gonna to go to copy, and I'm gonna copy this border straight across. Now this is the cell that we use. This is live in the file. They're often referenced in during the design process. I'm now going to drop this because it's a cell. So I'm gonna hit space bar, first row, last icon, groups, I'm gonna click that. And then the bottom right, there's the drop element tool. And it's currently set to complex, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop the element. Because I wanna show you, inside this cell, there is an element, it's called the plot shape. So I'm gonna to go to move element, space bar, move element. I'm gonna pick the element. I'm gonna hit reset a couple times, there it is. There's the plot shape. Now this is very important. This is built into the cell. If you do end up stumbling into this and you discover it's there, do not play with it. Do not mess with it. Leave it alone. Because if you drop that, if you change its attributes, then you're going to create a lot of work for somebody else, possibly yourself. So we're going to take a look at what are the attributes of this element. So I'm going to hit space bar, element selection. I'm going to press and hold the right button down. I'm going to come down to properties. The level for this element is border sheet. The color 252. The style is seven. The weight is zero. And the class is construction. Now construction class elements by default do not print. So this will not print out. So you don't have to worry about that. Now these attributes are very unique here at Caltrans. Nobody uses this combination of attributes at Caltrans, making it very specialized. That way when we go to print and if we're using a program to locate that plot shape, we can use those attributes and it won't be confused with any other elements. So these attributes are very specific and that'll come back into play when we go to batch print. As long as we have that shape either in our file or in a reference file, MicroStation can find it. So I'm going to go ahead and close my properties dialog. I'm going to do an undo all. Come back here. Now we're looking at our file. Now the next thing we're going to look at is MicroStation's print organizer. Now headquarters has moved it to the quick access toolbar at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it there. And you're going to see the print organizer dialog appear. Now there's a series of menu items there and there's also shortcut icons down here so the first thing we're going to look at is under file you can see there's options to add files add folders to the plot set we can also save off our p set or plot set as it's called we can open up an existing one or we can create a new one under edit there's some options there to change the order of things there's view so you can change the things that are available in this dialog and then tools at the end, this is where we have the option for print styles. So as I choose the apply print style, you'll see there's a dialog that'll appear here. Now we're gonna be choosing again, 11 by 17 plan sheet for PDF. So I'm gonna choose that. And that's the one it's gonna use as I load the files in. So the next thing I need to do is tell it which files do I want to batch print. So there's an icon right here, add files to set. I'm gonna click that icon. This dialog comes up. If you're familiar with Interplot Organizer, this dialog should look very familiar. It was written by the same people. Now we need to add files to print. So I'm gonna click the Add button. It's gonna ask me where are the files that I want to print. I'm gonna come up here to my history. It's gonna get me close. 
So there's a group of files I want to print under Layouts, and I'm going to add files 1 through 5. Got them selected. I'm going to go ahead and hit Done. We have specified the files we plan to print, but we do need to tell it the area, and that's where we go down to Manually Specified Options. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and you're going to see a dialog appear. On this dialog, there's several things we need to do. The first thing is define from shape the print area. So we're going to go ahead and click on this. Now we can search the active model, reference files, again, leaving them both selected is normally what we do. We then tell it to look for a shape with specific properties. So if I click here, click again, the level that was border underscore sheet, the color 252. Again, these are Caltrans standards. Weight was zero, style was seven. Now you need to make sure you get these things correct. If you get a mistake, if you don't put down a weight of zero, and you put down a weight of 10, then it may not find it. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now under Advanced, there are some options here, like for example, color, but this is going to be overridden by our display style we've selected. But here we have a choice, again, if we weren't overriding it. So in this case, if we chose grayscale or not, it wouldn't matter. Under the main tab here, paper size, again, you can see it's kind of grayed out. Because we had selected a print style, it's already telling it which size paper to use. But if we didn't do that, then we would need to specify the paper size we'd need to specify size down here as far as being maximized. We'd need to choose that. Again, we're not going to need to do that because we had a print style selected. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to click OK again. So with the files loaded in to Print Organizer, the columns that you see here, there are a few columns that you want to pay attention to. Under Print Area, you're going to want to see Fence. If this says fence, that means it found the plot shape. If it says view, that means it did not find the plot shape. So you want to make sure that these all say fence. Paper size, we're seeing paper size is set to ANSI B. And our scale, again, is coming out at 100. So we're taking something intended for a D size, and we're printing it on a B size. So that's why our scale is not going to be true. So we see also our paper size listed there. Now with this, we can go ahead and we can print off to a hard copy if we wanted to, or we can print to a PDF. So this would be a way for us to batch print from within MicroStation. Now we can make changes after the fact. So for example, let's say we had ANSI B. Let's say we decided, no, we want to do this on a D size. We would then select the files listed here, select them all. You can right click on them and then you can go to Properties. Now under the Properties dialog, this is where we could choose a paper size, and let's say ANSI D, and then we would, because we're overriding, we're going to hit Maximize, and then we're going to go ahead and hit OK, and now you're going to see it's printing to an ANSI D, and our scale is now 1 inch equals 50. And if we wanted to see a preview of what our plots are going to look like with them one or multiple selected, we can then just right click and then we'll see print preview. And then we'll see it come up and there's our print preview in the upper right corner. We can then just page through our different examples here. So as we go through each one, getting a preview of what it is going to look like before we print them out or create the PDFs. I'm going to close that. Now at this point we have a choice. We can either close this dialog because it is an untitled P set. That's the extension. We can close it without saving and then load the files in again later, or we can save this off. And we're going to go ahead and save this off. We're going to click save. Now it's going to ask us where we want to save this file. In this case it defaults to, again, my user folder and the name is untitled. So we're just going to go ahead and call this sheets 1-5 and you could call it whatever you want but the name should be indicative of what's in there you should probably put in the EA number your project number and then if you have just one through five sheets and you're expecting more people will know what this is so I can go ahead and click Save 
And now I can close this dialog. Now if I want to go back later, I can come back up to my print organizer. I can now go to the file pull down and you're going to see there's a history down here and there was the last one that I did. So if I select that from my history list or I can hit open and then navigate wherever I want to find one. But I'm going to choose from my history list. You can see those files are back and they're being displayed. Now this doesn't load in files into the PSET file. It loads pointers to those files. So that's what you're seeing is basically pointers and specific plot information in this case. So that is MicroStation's built-in print organizer. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Next thing we're going to look at is iPlot, the built-in client. So to print, whether it's MicroStation's print or iPlot, you still need to define the print area. And if I'm printing one file, the best way to do that is by a fence. Now we talked about doing this using AccuSnap. I showed you how to turn that back on, but I'm going to show you even a faster way to place a fence. Now this does require that the plot shape exists either in the active file or attached reference file. If it has that, headquarters has written a VBA, a program that will look for it. If it finds it, it will place the fence for you. That is programmed to the function key F8. So I'm going to go ahead and press F8 on my keyboard. And you saw that it flickered on the screen. And now we have a fence placed right where it needs to be based on that plot shape. So that's a very fast way for me to get that fence placed. Now I'm going to go ahead and clear my fence. So we're going to look at that function key and see what it's programmed to do because we're going to be adding to it. So not only is it going to place the fence for us if it finds the plot shape, we want it to launch iPlot. So what we're going to do is add to the key in semicolon and then we're going to put an iPlot. So I'm going to go to the function keys dialog. I'm going to get to it by going to my search ribbon up in the top right, type in FUNC and I can either hit enter or click on the word function keys. I'm going to hit enter. This opens my function keys dialog. Here's F8. So what I want to do is get it up here in the action field. So I'm going to click on it. And then right up here, I'm going to at the end click and I'm going to put in a semicolon and then I plot. And then I'm going to hit enter. You can see it shows up there. So I know it's good. And I'm going to click save. I could have just clicked save, but hitting enter lets you confirm it. So I'm going to click save. Now, not only is it going to place the fence on the shape, but it's going to launch iPlot immediately after. So here I go. I'm going to press F8 on my keyboard right now. So you can see it very quickly placed the fence and it launched iPlot for me. So on the iPlot dialog, while we're here, let's go ahead and talk about it here. Now on the iPlot dialog, depending upon where you are, if you're working from home, if you're working in the office, depending upon which district you're in, this is where it becomes very localized. So you're either going to have access to iPlot plotters, plotters that are configured by iPlot, and that can help set a lot of these things, or you're going to need to set things up a little bit manually. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate. So one of the first things you're going to want to do if you don't have an iPlot server is you need to specify the design script. So I'm going to come up here to file and then on the file pull down, there's select plotting files. So I'm going to select that and now it comes up and for my design script, this is where I'm going to need to navigate to select one already provided by headquarters. So I'm going to go to the far right, click on the three dots, it's going to come up and it's going to ask me where is the plot drivers. So I'm going to navigate to my C drive. I'm going to go to Caltrans, HQ, MS Connect, plot driver, it's buried pretty deep, pen, iPlot pen tables, we're almost there, and then roadway v10 and this is where they're located. Now the name of these pen tables kind of tell you a little bit about what it does. So you can see there's CT final ps &E. That would be for ps &E final. You can see there's as built. There's also full black and white, which means D size. And then there's half black and white down here if you're doing a 11 by 17. In this case, we're going to be doing a full size. So we're going to choose full 
bw.pen. I'm going to select that. That's all we need to do in that dialog, and you will need to do that each time, unfortunately, again, if you're not connected to an iPlot environment. So I'm going to close that dialog. Coming down here, we have our job name, which is based on our file. Printer, again, I have Adobe Acrobat installed on my computer. You may not. You may need to use Qt PDF, or again, if you're connected to a iPlot plotter, you could see that plotter listed like ADD or TIFF output or something like that. This is something you'll have to talk with your coworkers in your group and determine which printer should you be choosing. Now, again, I've got Adobe PDF for paper size. I'm going to set that. I'm going to be doing ANSI D. So I'm going to select ANSI D, click OK. You can see there's a paper size, 34 by 22. And you see a little preview. What we need to do is tell it to use full paper size. So I'm going to select that. And now maximizes. To the right, we're getting more information. Plot area, we're seeing that set to fence. That's what we want. Our size, paper size, is 34 by 22. And our scale is 50. Again, the intended legal target is a D-sized piece of paper. And if you have a border, a layout sheet, and if it says 1 inch equals 50 in the bottom corner, this should say 50 exactly, dot zero, zero, zero. If it says anything else other than that, if it doesn't say 50.000, then it says 9, then there's something wrong with the plot shape, most likely. So you'll make sure that where you place the fence or the plot shape has not been um, altered in any way. So these are things you want to check here. Now, there is a preview button, which we can go ahead and click to see a preview. There's also a plot button when we're ready to plot. And the exit button, this is something about this dialog. You don't want to minimize this dialog, which is there's a minimize right up here, because MicroStation is waiting for you to either exit or hit plot. It's not going to let you do anything in MicroStation until you've done that. And some people will inadvertently hit the minimize, and then MicroStation's locked up because it's still waiting for iPlot to be finished. So in this case, we're just going to try the preview first. So we're going to click preview. And then you see the preview come up. And this is iPlot preview. So we can zoom in and out by scrolling the wheel on our mouse. So as I scroll my wheel, what you're going to see, these lines, you can see they look like a bunch of little dots. That's how iPlot does dropout. So these will print out and look like on your print, it will look like it's dropped out. So don't be concerned. This is to be expected here. So I'm going to go ahead and close the preview. And at this point, if I wanted to create what's called an iParm file, and just to explain what that is, an iParm file, there was a time at Caltrans when that was one of the requirements. When you're submitting for PSNE, all your drawings for every DGN, there had to be an accompanying IPARM file. The IPARM file contains print information. It doesn't contain the file. It just contains information about the settings for the printing of that file. It still needs the file to know what to print, but it contains like paper size and print area and things like that. So if you need to create them, if you're going to do it just for this file, you can just come up and go to File, and then you can go to Save. And if we look at our status down at the bottom, we can see that there's the name of the file, .i. So right now, in my project directory, there is a .i file. So if you do see these, that's what they're for. And they are created when you do a preview, okay, and when you do a print. But if you're just having to create IPARMs, again, it's not being required in all of the districts. You'll need to confirm with your OE whether that is a requirement. So that's what the .i file does. To look inside a .i file or an IPARM, if I go to Tools and I come down to Show IPARM, you can then get an idea of what's inside the IPARM. What does it remember? So things like plot area, fence, that's one of the things it remembers. So down below, this is the actual location for the fence or the plot area. As I scroll on down here, you can see there's paper size, things like that, orientation. If I go a little further, you're going to see there's the file. And if I had reference files, they'd be listed out too. But it also remembers what levels were on and which levels were off. 
So this is an important thing. When you go to use Interplot Organizer, batch printing, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to remember what levels were on when you loaded the files into iPlot or Interplot Organizer. So that's something that you may have to update. And again, that's more for Interplot Organizer. So this is what's in, contained inside an IMPARM file. So I'm going to go ahead and dismiss this. Again, this may be required or it may not be required. So I just want to make sure I covered that. So at this point, if I wanted to plot my drawing or print it, I could click the plot icon. And then it's going to come up and ask me, where do I want to save off my PDF? Because that's what I was telling it to create. So it would just drop off the PDF. So I'm, I'm not going to actually create it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. And again, we need to close the iPlot dialog. We don't want to leave this open. Don't minimize it. We need to close it to work. So I'm going to hit exit. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is Interplot Organizer. So this is iPlot, but this is our batch processing capability. So to get to Interplot Organizer, we would go to the File pull-down menu at the top, slide on down to Print, and then number two on the list there is Interplot Organizer. So I'm going to select that. This is a completely separate program, even though we launched it from within MicroStation. First thing that comes up says, welcome to ProjectWise Interplot Organizer. What would you like to do? So you have a choice. You can create a new plot set from files you select, which is what we want to do, or you can open up an existing plot set. We don't have one, so we're going to go ahead and create a new one. So we're going to click OK. Just like we did with MicroStation's print organizer, this is written by the same people. This is why this dialog looks similar. We need to add the files to print. So we're going to go ahead and click Add. It remembers the last files that I printed, so it's going to give me that list there. Now, down below here where it says Files of Type, I want to take a moment and look at this. So you can see there's lots of other types of files that we can actually print with Interplot Organizer. It's not just MicroStation files. But you'll notice IPARM files down here. Now, as I mentioned before, part of the requirement for PSNE submittal was if you had 100 DGN files, 100 sheets, you had to supply OE with 100 IPARM files, one IPARM for each one of the DGNs. What they wanted to be able to do was load into print, into Interplot Organizer, your IPARMs for the files because they don't know if your files have a plot shape or don't have a plot shape. So you had to create the IPARMs, so that means you had to define the plot area, however you did it. So this was part of what they were requiring and why. So we're going to be doing DGN files. We're going to add these five files here, sheets one through five. And just like we did before on MicroStation's print organizer, we need to specify some things and we need to manually specify them. So I'm going to select MicroStation DGN files here in the list. It's a little bit different than what we did with MicroStation's print organizer. We're going to click options on the right. And then we're going to get the plot creation options. Now there's a series of tabs across the top. Here under layout, you're going to choose a paper size. So we'll go ahead and we'll choose our ANSI D. And then we'll tell it we want to maximize. Now the print area, this is where we need to specify the plot shape. So I'm going to click describe plot shape. Again, just like we had before, it's going to look at our master file and our reference files. We need to tell it levels. And technically, you could just put color, weight, and style in there. You technically don't need the level, um, but if you wanted to add it in, you would just click Add and put it in. So color is 252 for the plot shape. Weight is 0. Style is 7. And down below, where it says Create One Plot from the First Matching Shape, that's typically what you want to do for layout sheets. But if you're dealing with cross sections that came from Civil 3D, then you're probably going to want to have, if they have plot shapes around each cross section, tell it to create one plot for each matching shape. So you can technically have a file that has multiple plot shapes, and that's generally a cross section file. So in this case, we only have one, so we're going to leave it set. We're going to click OK to that. We're going to go to the General tab, and here we want to tell it the design script. Again, I don't have an iPlot printer set up, 
So I need to kind of specify some of these things manually. So I'm going to choose Design Script. And here, under Name, I'm going to Browse. And I'm going to navigate to that same file. So I'm going to go to my C drive. I'm going to go to Caltrans, HQ, MS Connect, Plot Driver, Pen, iPlot Pen Tables, Roadway V10, and again, the same pen tables we had before. So I'm going to choose again, full BW for black and white. Click open. And that's all I need to do at this point. So I can just click OK to this dialog. And one more OK, and it begins to load the files in to the Interplot Organizer. It now begins to calculate the information about the files that I want it to print. No files are being actually installed or added to this file. It's just information about the printing of these files. So with the information here, just like we had with our Microstition Print Organizer, there's some columns we need to pay attention to. First of all is plot area. We need to make sure that says fence. If it says view, something went wrong. Our design script, in this case, full BW or black and white, paper size, ANSI D, and our scale, 50 to 1, or 1 inch equals 50. And our paper size, obviously, is 34 by 22. So now at this point, I've got the files loaded in, and I have them specified. Just like Print Organizer, I could change some of this information by selecting all the files, right-clicking, and I can go to Properties. And if I wanted to, I could change my paper size. So let's say, for example, I wanted to do 11 by 17. Again, I would maximize. Now all I have to do is click OK. It will go back out and recalculate this information. You can see now my paper size is 11 by 17, and obviously my scale changed accordingly. So once we have them all figured out, what paper size we want, our plot area is good, you now have a choice of printing to a printer. You can print out a hard copy. And again, if I'm doing 11 by 17, then I would be able to print it to my laser printer. But if I did a D size, then I would have to have a full size printer. The other option is to print a PDF. So I could print a PDF if I wanted to. Uh, if I click that red icon right there, I get options to again, put them all in one PDF or separately. I can tell it to invoke the PDF when I'm done. Then I would just click Create PDF. It would then ask me where I want to put the PDF and what do I want to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And I'm not going to be printing, so I'm going to cancel this. If I wanted to create IPARMS, again, that may not be required, but if it is, what I don't want to do is create IPARMS one at a time. I want to be able to batch create them if I have to. So with these files selected, I'm going to go to File, and then I'm going to go to Export Plots. So if I select that, it's now going to ask me where do I want to put these, and this is where I want to put them, is in the folder where the DGNs are. When I click OK, if I blink, I'm going to miss it. What you're going to see right down here is Export Information. So it happens very quickly. And now it's done. So you can see there's exporting down here, sheets one through five. If I opened up the folder, I would then see, I'm going to navigate to the folder where they are. And here you go. There's my DGN, there's my IPARM file. Again, IPARM files may not be required. If they are though, you can batch create them just like that. And the last thing is we could save off our project-wise interplot organizer plot set if we wanted to. So we could click Save. Again, it would ask us where do we want to put it. We would want to put it in a project directory. So if I just navigate quickly where my files are for this example, and I can then save it off here and say whatever I want to call it, give it the project number, and then how many sheets. So I'm just going to say sheets 1-5 and save that off. Now when I close it and if I launched it again, if I went back up to File, Print, Interplot Organizer, when it comes up and it asks me what do I want to do, I already have an existing plot set. It'll If I select that and I click OK, 
it will always go to the last one you created. So I'm just going to choose that, select open, and again it shows me the files that I plan to print. Now when you go to print, if I was to load these files in on Monday, it's going to look at those files and it's going to see which levels are turned on and turned off and what reference files are attached and what levels are on and off for them and which reference files have been detached. That's information it's remembering. So if you have turned on new levels or off levels and you need to update that before you print because you're printing on Wednesday and things have changed, then you can update from the files. You can just select them here in the list right click, go to properties, go to the general tab, and down here at the bottom it says update plots from design files. So if I select that and I click OK, it's going to say right here updating. So it's gone back out at this moment and looked at those files and said what levels are on and off, which reference files are attached, detached, and what levels are on and off of the reference files. So you can update this. Now, it was pretty quick to load them in. So a lot of people say six of one, half dozen the other. You can just reload them in afresh each time, or you can update them, your choice. So hopefully you found this series informative, and this is enough information to get you started using MicroStation here at Caltrans.